season eight is all about what's at Robin's doorstep. And there will be no deflection. There will be questions and she'll have to answer. I'm really happy for her to maybe have this opportunity to show some decorum to Robert up as she always does and be the Robert that we know her to be and handle her and stop deflecting. Hey everyone and welcome back to my Rebel channel. We're gonna rev about Real Housewives of Potomac season seven, episode 16, The Naked Truth. Remember that the season finale is next week with the reunion episodes to follow. So when we get into that reunion, I will keep my same tradition that I have always done. Instead of doing it on a weekly basis, we're gonna do a full spectrum season recap. This is gonna include the reunion, things from the season. We're gonna talk about the fashions, some of the women's accomplishments, what we liked, what we disliked, what we wish we would have seen and what could have been done better and honestly when it comes to this episode is it really the naked truth or is there some fabrications and then on some stuff that I talked about last week we have some new details that has came in that is going to bring everything into a full circle so let's go ahead and get into it after all the craziness in Mexico we got to see the montages of all the women in their separate lives Wendy and her family is packaging candles. Candace is practicing for her performance. And then we have Mia back at home organizing clothes. I believe she's organizing clothes or she's giving away clothes. But either way, her cousin is there to help her. Then we see Robin planning to do some bridal shopping for her private ceremony. She lets us know that she was ready to come home from the trip. And that's something that she says is not the norm for many people. It is definitely the norm. <laughs> I went on vacation about two years ago to Atlanta. And y'all, when I tell you it was hell the moment I walked off of that plane but I do plan to go back try to redo it because I feel like maybe the vibes was just off the moment I stepped off the plane I want to give Atlanta a second try that's just me being sidetracked for a little bit but then Robin lets us know that she's overwhelmed by planning the wedding in about a month but she's determined to do it and listen there is no way you're going to plan a wedding within a month she runs down every little thing that she has to do and I'm sitting there like I thought you said it was just going to be a private ceremony so why do you need all this other stuff so this lets me know you're going overboard and honestly I'm one of those people where if you don't plan properly then you shouldn't do it I feel like I don't do last minute that's my motto but we know it kind of works out for her in the end and I only say that because based off the details that came out she really didn't even have the wedding within that month span it was well after that fact she lets us know that she marches to the beat of her own drum especially when she's talking about picking out dresses Ashley and Giselle join her and Robin goes to the back to try them on while she's doing that Ashley wastes no time to slowly fill Giselle in on what she has missed from that last night on that trip because you know Giselle turns in very early Ashley says something's happened. You and Candace kissed? No. Oh, okay, not me and Candace. Someone else kissed? Ashley says that Mia was admiring how attractive Wendy is. Would Giselle want to know what did Mia think of it? And Ashley lets her know that Wendy was intrigued. How does Wendy and Mia go from like going back and forth to being cool like in a split second and now you want to fill up on each other? Make it make sense. Is really giving storyline or trying to fish for a storyline at this moment. Giselle thinks that Mia threw the drink at Wendy because there may be sexual frustrations there. I think this is Mia's way of covering up everything she did during the season. So instead of us talking about her antics, her lies, and different stuff she has done, let's talk about her and Wendy possibly being, you know, into each other in some shape or form. Nice try. Then we see Giselle saying her confessional. I need to confer with Miss Mia because if she is bumping vaginas with Wendy or doing some licking action, I need to know that before I start telling people. Giselle is Giselle at this moment. So I'm waiting to see how much she's going to embellish on this story. We know she likes to add 20 on 10. But Robin shows back up and she shows them the first dress. It's a nice lace, low number or whatever. Then the second dress, it kind of peed me old. I hated it. I was like, girl, there are nine traditional dresses that look 10 times better than that. Then with the third option, it was given, you know, in the name of a yarn. Basic. Mashed potatoes with no butter. After Ashley leaves, Giselle's asks Robin, you know, why is your mom not here shopping with us? And Robin lets her know that she didn't even invite her mom. She hasn't told her yet. And then they discuss the bachelorette party. Giselle lets Robin know that she talked to Mia. They're gonna do an upscale strip club. She also asks her, who does she want to be there? We already know Karen is not gonna be on that list. 
They didn't see eye to eye before Mexico, and now they don't see eye to eye after that. Then we learned that she doesn't want Wendy there because she felt like she was laughing at what Karen had said. And I was like, girl, everybody at that table was laughing at what Karen had said. The way she said it was funny, even though it's something serious. Like, it's very serious what she said, but it was funny. Everybody laughed. So it looks like you're just trying to fish for an issue, Robin. Something that you've been doing this whole time season then we have the two different scenes with candace and chris and wendy and karen both of them are discussing the trip and so much more they talk about saying your shenanigans in mexico they talk about robin versus karen karen feels like robin has misdirected anger and chris feels like well of course why not throw another husband under the bus candace thinks well, this was a dumb way of saying that or so forth. And in my last video, I did mention how I believe Karen's statement. Yes, he probably really did make her feel uncomfortable. But I felt like she kind of embellished a bit by saying, you know, the woman resembled her and so forth. I felt like that was just sprinkling a little something on there. And I said a lot of times the blogs likes to come out with stuff without having proof. So you have to take things with a grain of salt. But after my recording, I started to hear some things about a TikToker that had receipts on someone. And basically somebody in my comments on my last video, they commented and they let me know that, hey, Robin knew about Juan messing around and etc. Now, I don't know if this person listened to the Bandits podcast or if they just had a feeling on it but I did comment and let them know that I did hear something about the TikToker with the receipts so I do want to check that out because if I'm going to say things are not alleged or so forth I want to make sure the facts are there so yeah it looks like he really did do the stuff y'all first of all I was aware of the situation mm -hmm. before we filmed season seven right and because this young lady was so pressed to tell me and to tell you, Giselle, yes. I assume she told the whole cast. Right, because she DM'd me. Right, right, right. So all of season seven, I'm just like waiting for somebody to bring it up. Because <laughs> you know, Karen is good for thinking she got some tea. Right, mm -hmm. anybody. I mean, like, like that's our life. You right. know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just ready for it. I'm waiting for it. Um, And so when we're in Mexico and Ashley tells me that Karen, you know, was talking about us. And I'm like, okay, I'm, this is it. Right. And she talks about some blonde holding hands, you know, him, him holding hands with a blonde and George Hannah looks like Karen. I'm like, <laughs> okay, this is, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Okay. Cause... Right. Whew. So that was, you know, it was kind of comical to me. So then we go down that road. But however, I was already aware of the situation and I expected, I assumed to talk about it on season seven. Right. Now, the situation when it was presented to me was handled, was discussed. Mm -hmm. It was handled. It was something we had to work through, you okay. know. Um, it was not something that it was just like, oh, okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. However, there are a lot of things that need to be cleared up with what's being said with what allegedly happened, which did not. So stupid. The TikToker has the receipts. The bandits have came out. Robin has said it on the podcast that she basically has known about it ahead of time. So that definitely matches up with what the woman is saying. So right now it's kind of not looking good for them because it's no longer just rumors. Is this why you try to speed up that ceremony to cover up some of those things, Robin? Let us know. And I feel like this is not going to be a good look for them because, especially for Juan, because the details that are coming out when it comes to this woman kind of looks bad because it kind of correlates in a way to the other coach and a player. We all know what he's under fire for right now, allegedly, or so forth. It's not looking good for them. Then we have Candace and Chris in their three cutouts still having a conversation. I threw the three cutouts in there because, listen, they have made another entrance. Like, that is super funny. I've never seen nobody have that within their home. But they are discussing the music video that it will be revealed at a party along with the deluxe album cover. They also talk about them doing IVF again now that there is a lot of stress out of their way. Then with Wendy and Karen, they talk about Robin. She talks about how Robin showed everybody pictures of Karen except for Wendy and Karen, of course. Wendy brings up... When you had your wig shift party yep. at the salon? Yep. And Robin was like, Are you afraid of what you might say when you drink? No, I'm not. But you should be concerned about what Juan says when he's drunk. And when you and said when, that, when I fired that, I knew she knew I knew. Like, wait. Ding, 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 ding. I thought that was about something else, but I guess I was wrong. Listen, Karen was giving facts at that moment. Ashley then calls Karen. Karen lets her know that they are talking about Robin's misdirected anger towards her, which we know she definitely has misdirected anger at this point. Ashley lets them know that they aren't in a group chat for the bachelorette party. Wendy wants to know what is Robin's issue with her if they are supposed to be moving forward. Ashley says that Giselle doesn't get along with her, so maybe that's why you're not invited. And Wendy says, But we have to call a spade a spade. We've all been brides. The people invited to our bachelorette and bridal party these are people we want there, not the mm. people who are throwing the event. So I think this is another example of her not being honest. Like, what is the issue? Oh, Wendy. 
I bet you're glad you didn't get that friendship bracelet, girl, because listen, Robin really don't have an issue with you. Robin just got around Giselle and started acting different. She does that every single time. And honestly, I try to give her the benefit of the doubt. I don't like to come at people all the time. You got to look at things both ways. But at this point, Robin is you. And Wendy, we've been trying to tell you that. That's why it was giving me pick-me's a little bit on that last episode. Because I was like, girl, it's very clear that they don't mess with you. Giselle visits Mia before Giselle begins to, you know, Giselle and do her thing. Mia gives her a tour of the home. And I agree with Giselle. The house is gorgeous. But I still think it's crazy to put all that money into a space that you do not own. I will go only so far. I may do the upgrades of painting some walls. Add a few mirrors here. Paint the cabinets to lively it up a little bit. Different little things like that. But I'm not going to redo all flooring. Then Giselle changes the subject and she begins to Giselle like I tell y'all like she likes to do. She lets her know that her and Robin were out shopping for dresses. And while they were doing that, Ashley let her know. She said the last night in Mexico oh. <laughs> that there was some high flirtation coming from Mia to Wendy. And maybe, I think it was reciprocated. Okay, fine, I was spreading rumors that y'all had sex. Okay, I, I did. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, I spread some rumors. Just don't stop. Okay. We know she is gonna put 20 on 10. She lets us know that she only told Robin about it. And then Mia says that Wendy was showing her vagina. She looked at Wendy's, Wendy saw hers. Mia also says that Wendy wasn't jealous of her, it's just that sexual energy. And I was like, Mia, I thought it was the other way around. I feel like you're adding a little more to it because she just told us all she did was see it. Then in the same breath, she turned around and said she touched it. Production pointed this out and saying, I thought you said she just looked at it. Mia says, no, she touched it. The lies, there you the go, lies. Lies, bitch, the I'm lies. telling you. It's giving fake storyline. Y'all gonna add 20 on 10. We're gonna see some other people do this within the episode too. They're gonna say one thing and turn around and say something else. Mia says her and Wendy are still cool, but she realized that, you know, she's not invited, neither is Karen, and she understands why Karen isn't invited, but why isn't Wendy invited to the bachelorette party? Giselle says Wendy is doing team too much, and I was like, ma'am, y'all are team too much. And if they're upset, about her laughing y'all how are you not mad at everybody else i mean robin you laughed at the incident when they were in miami you laugh at other incidents but you're mad because somebody laughed at something else that somebody else has said do we not remember when you laughed when ashley called katie stupid in the earlier seasons maybe i'm fishing just a little bit but i'm just saying you laugh at different things here and there when people say stuff so make it make sense they also talk about mia and jacqueline still not being on the same page and honestly i don't even care about that anymore then they discuss the bachelorette party mia shows her the decor for the night and they try to find a lot of some things with giselle finishing it off by drinking out of that straw. Before I get to the bachelorette party stuff, we learned that while Wendy and Karen aren't invited, both of them are handling some important issues. Wendy was discussing the Roe versus Wade, and I thought this was a powerful moment to see on the show. She says some things that I have tried to express to a lot of people. Because as, as Mark rightfully said, this goes back to what was established in 1868. Now this is about what is the United States going to look like anything Thing that is being reviewed is now up for grabs and that should scare everyone. Then we see Karen. She is expanding her candle line to the four wick limited edition. You know, Karen is basically saying what a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside, what a money reside. Oh. The women meet at Mia's house along with Mia's cousin, the bandit's assistant, and some of Robin's friends. As everybody makes it, we see what Joan Rivers would have called a How many of y'all remember Fashion Police? That was my stuff when I was in like elementary, middle school. I used to watch that show faithfully. Who do you guys think wore the outfit better? I think Mia wore it a little better than her. I would have changed my outfit if I was in Ashley's shoes. Then we see Sharice there. So side note, this outfit that she showed up in, this is the most put together she's been on this season. Other than the reunion. We talked about her reunion. It shocked me a bit. You're winning tonight. Robin joins the group. Everybody's excited. We also see Sharice mention. I was like, I should have been giving her the party and I kind of had to take the back seat because Mia, who's known her for five seconds, jumps in and decides to do it. And of course, Giselle's the bestie, so that wasn't my feelings, but I didn't show it. Someone's a little salty. I think it's best for Mia to throw it because honestly, y'all don't give me like the turn up vibes. Mia knows, <laughs> Mia knows some stuff. Mia know people. I feel like she's the best person to throw it at. But if you want to throw the party, I mean, you can throw her one separately. 
no need to be in your feelings about it. It's just given. I just really want to be on this show, honestly, when it comes to her. Everyone is drinking and having a good time. We begin to see a long line of them beginning to focus on people who are not there. We're going to see this later on in episode two when it's supposed to be about Robin. Then Cherie says, uh, uh, you never know. Then I always say, say yes. yes. If you have an issue with Robin, something's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. With yourself. Is something wrong with us because we don't care for her? We see her for her antics and she continues to prove us wrong every now and then. Like, we try to give her a chance to season and it just... <sighs> It went sour super duper fast. Candace asks, do they clean the poles in between dances? Ashley says she has touched worse. They bring up Mia and Wendy kissing. Cherie said that she saw them do it or whatever. There are a lot of different allegations that are thrown out on this bus, but we learned there was a four way of basically just kissing between Wendy, Mia, Candace, and Ashley. Mia said that she shut everything down and Candace said being with a woman is a commitment she is not ready to commit to. The women make it to the club. It is slightly different from what you would normally see, but Mia says, I wanted Robin to have fun. I go sometimes and I just grab some food and I roll out. What's wrong with that? It's a restaurant. So she's a regular. They order their bottles, they order their food, and later on in the episode, we see the food that comes out and I gotta give it to her. Mia was right. The the lobster was looking good. I love me some good seafood. The food was looking good in general. And then when production added the music and you could see the women truly enjoying the meal, I was like, okay, I get it. I actually get it. But the music was hilarious to have in the background. The dancers are dancing. Oh, and it was given high scale. But the dancers was dancing. Robin is whispering in one of the women's ears. We don't really know what she's saying. So comment and let me know what you think she was saying. And then the women are enjoying the festivities while Sharice asks Ashley, what's up with her and Michael? Ashley says that her and Michael has been having like some nice times at the moment. Candace says if she had the chance to get away, I'm not even gonna say it. I'm gonna just put it in here because. <laughs> Probably the opportunity to leave Gollum and take half of his money. Where is the train? I'm getting on it. Like that was super, <laughs> I would get away from Michael too at this point. The women want to know if they're gonna reconcile because Ashley is making all kinds of excuses. She's stuttering. Ashley says she doesn't know, but, and she stops on her words a little bit. In other words, it's given, they aren't divorcing. Ashley has been playing in our face all season. Just say that you want to get your own home. You want to live a separate life. You want your own money or something like that, but you're not going to divorce him. Just say that. Like, stop playing in everybody's face. It's getting to the point I'm starting to think that it's not just her. It's a lot of people that's playing in our faces and they lying. And you can see it on Ashley's face because when Candace said, oh, well, she was in my man's restaurant with a He came up to you the other night with a woman. She was not cute, according to Chris. Because Chris, I mean, Chris was at work. Ashley was being caught up in them lies, girl. Ashley says, don't tell me one thing and do another thing. Cherie says what we all was thinking. Well, you can't be mad because you're getting a divorce. He cheated on you while y'all were married. He was seeing other people then. We'll make you think he ain't seeing people now. Ashley, make it make sense. Make it make sense. And when are we going to see when Uncle Lump tells her, like, come on, snap out of it? Because it's not making any sense right now. Rob and Giselle, they actually here these days. I don't really think about her. The thing she tried to have her a Whitney Houston mama girl. Curious about what do you think of her? What do I think of her? Yes. I don't think of her. And you ain't got it. You don't have that moment because you ain't got it. Y'all remember the five heartbeats? <laughs> you want my spot flash? Huh? Well, you ain't gonna get it because you ain't got it. You try to have that moment. It didn't work because you definitely think about her. She says, what is her issue with her? She has never aired any of Karen's stuff, which we know she did. And then she proceeds to do exactly what she just said she doesn't do. And the freaking girl disappeared. I hate friends that disappear. I have friends like that. No, Karen's in my ass. So we're like, where's Karen? When that girl drinks and gets drunk, it's on. It's on. She will stop. Whatever. And in Potomac, she's known for somebody that just gets drunk up and will any that will come her way. That Girl, listen. <laughs> Candace 
Candace. Candace comment on the side, girl, who are these friends? Like that was super funny to hear in the background. But Sharice, you literally brought up the stuff about blue eyes. You brought up this information here. You brought up the stuff about you going to the parents' funeral and trying to use that to get back into the group. I know people were saying, well, she started the group. Why would she need to get back in a group? Because she needs to get back on the show. Sharice is boring. She comes off boring in that way or has nothing else going on. You lied about her not checking on you when Karen had the proof that she actually really did. I mean, it's very clear why she doesn't communicate with you and why she doesn't mess with you. Well, honestly... I wouldn't mess with you either. And at this point, it's really no secret. Her and Ray already said that she can have eye candy. Maybe they just don't want everybody knowing what she's doing. Maybe that's why she doesn't say it at this point or whatever. Then they turned around later on and try to say, well, Blue Eyes wasn't even a driver. First they said he was a driver. Then they said that Blue Eyes is somebody that works at a hotel. And I was like, girl, which one is it? Are y'all making up stuff at this point? Then we hear the women say that they heard the rumors. Candace says she has no comment. Giselle says everyone knew about it except Mia. Mia says in her confessional she heard the rumor, but I don't think she did, honestly. I think she was just trying to get in on the, on the allegations. Then Mia jokes. Why saying that Karen's a prostitute? Listen, this was super funny because Giselle does this. And it's not just Giselle that does this. Mia does this. Ashley does this. They put 20 on 10 on what somebody said and try to embellish. But it was super funny. And that was the episode. Let me know what you guys think. Honestly, it's given let's just continue to not really show our life and let's just spread more rumors and bring other people's stuff up unprovoked, honestly. That's a little weird. I wonder how Karen is going to react because y'all are really spreading a lot of different stuff about her. And honestly, she was the major component at this bachelorette party. This is supposed to be about Robin. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in and I'll see y'all next time.